Hey, uh, this is very different from where I usually shoot, because I'm in Melbourne! Actually, I'm in an Airbnb right now because uh, I was just doing some work down here in Melbourne and seeing some friends. But obviously the election is happening. And elections are always very exciting, especially here in Australia, because we have our mainstream parties such as the ALP and the Liberals and Greens. But also there are so many minor and fringe parties that it's becoming very chaotic. Very, very chaotic. So I thought I would come up with a very, very quick guide where I'll run through at least 30 seconds of whether or not they're left or right wing, as well as uh, just why you should kind of worry about them. So obviously a lot of them are very sort of single issue parties and that's okay, I have no real issue with that. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there that even I wasn't expecting at all. And so I, yeah, so I would run through all 40 of them. There's 40 of them. And these are the ones that I could actually find information about. Some of them just have a Facebook page. They will be uh, put into a scale of whether they're left wing, right wing, uh, and uh, the way that I've done that is that if they're left wing, uh, I'm gonna put Luke Wilson on the screen. If they're right wing, I'm gonna put Rook Wilson, who was a Wilson brother that I've made up. And if they're centrist, I've made Cuke Wilson. Just Luke Wilson's face on a cucumber. Obviously I'm gonna go alphabetical here just to keep kind of things in line with the scale that we have. This is based on the policies that I've seen and the candidates that have actually come forward so far. Obviously a few candidates have let's just say, been removed from the uh, upcoming election, and that's fine too. It's the ones that are currently running rather than the ones that have been taken out of the race, as it were. And so with that, let's get started because there are a lot of these parties. The Animal Justice Party. I've never had any awful interaction with them, but they seem very attention-grabby, much like their American counterparts. Peter, which I don't trust for a fucking second at all. They seem pretty good about having less live exports, but a lot of their stuff isn't actually cost or evidence-based policies. It's just kind of how they feel about animals, and I'm not more about reels and feels right now. Australian Christians. They're a real cool party in WA, and they hate porn, and homosexuality, and abortions, and euthanasia. You know, all the things that make WA real, real cool. Australia first. I, I feel like I don't need to tell you what their party is about, but they're essentially if a Southern Cross tattoo came to life. In fact, it's, it's literally their logo. Uh, real cool, real cool people. <laughs> Australian Conservatives. Eat shit, Corey. No, look, they, uh, they're very right wing, and uh, they're not good people, essentially. They constantly are against homosexuality and are quite Islamophobic. Australian Democrats. So the Democrats, and they were started by a former liberal senator, typical liberals, um, but their website says that they're not left and not right, just moving forward, which sounds centrist. So I'd say, dude, you're a centrist. The Australian Mental Health Party. Again, this is one of those single issue kind of parties. And honestly, I have no issue with this. They're about removing the stigma for mental health and obviously improving the actual fund for mental health, not just regular people like you and I, but obviously for the youth of Australia. And I, I think that that's actually pretty good. The Australian People's Party. They're an anti-immigration party. We'll see a lot of those, to be honest, uh, which is very troubling considering that the Liberal government is also fairly anti-immigration. So they kind of already have a party for that. It's like, it's, you already have one in power, dude. Just be happy. Oh, you want less immigration? Less than there already is now, which has been driven down over the last five years? Okay, all right, that's fine. That's totally fine too. The Australian Protectionist Party. They're protecting what's white. Oh no. They're protecting what's right and what's white. Oh God, no. The Australian Workers' Party. Ah, yes, comrade. No, actually, they're actually quite pro-union. They want essential services to not be privatized, which I'm very, very much in support of. They want everything back into public hands. The only thing I just feel a little bit weird about is that they're quite vague on policies and on like imports. Uh, again, I, I, don't, I don't see any really major issue with this party at the moment, but it just seems to be uh, their policies could just be a little bit better written. The Center Alliance. Wow, I wonder, oh look, hi, Cuke Wilson. Remember Nick Xenophon? Remember when putting your name in a goddamn political party didn't work? It's basically just him again. It's the title is just as much of a coward as he is. The Christian Democratic Party or the Fred Nile Group. Oh boy, boy oh boy oh boy oh boy. Look, last time I checked, Jesus was a socialist and a lot of the stories in the Bible were kind of under a medieval evangelical monarchy. And I kind of don't want that in this Australia. So I don't know, maybe just pray for some good votes. I feel like that'll work for you, right? The Citizens Electoral Council. Now these guys, um, look, they were very difficult to put on the scale because they're protectionist and they're pro-union and they're anti-privatization. However, some of the candidates have talked against climate change and one of them believes in a Port Arthur conspiracy theory and it's just, uh, it's very, I wouldn't vote for them. Climate action, immigration action, accountable politicians. 
These all sound like great things. Uh, actually, it is a uh, rebrand of Senators Online. It's like this weird direct democracy thing where you can like get your, the politicians to talk about the policies that you want them to talk about, but it just, it kind of feels like it's weird and won't really work. Like I don't, I don't want to treat politics like I'm trying to win a game of Quiplash, you know? Like it just, there's a few other parties that are like this as well and I obviously go through them later on, but just not a big fan of this to be honest. Darren Hinch's Justice Party. I, uh, look, I don't like Darren Hinch that much and it kind of feels like the justice that he doles out isn't very good. He's been in Parliament for several years now. Uh, other than his appearances on Sunrise, I haven't really seen him talk much and it could be because he's catching up on some Z's. Yeah, that's a, that's a picture of you in Parliament sleeping. There are plenty of pictures of politicians sleeping in Parliament, as you can see there, but also like, dude, make a better impression. These guys have been working hard for several years. You used to have a TV show and you used to probably stay up real late researching that. Fraser Anning's Conservative National Party. Holy shit, the Eggman cometh. Uh, look, I don't like him at all. He's obviously very anti-immigration and uh, he said some fucked things. And that's obviously what he wants to do. Let's hope you don't get more than 19 votes, buddy. Health Australia Party. Wow, it looks like no jab, no play and no votes. Yeah, these guys are like really anti-vax. Ah, I do not support them. The Hemp Party or the Help End Marijuana Prohibition Party. Look, they are another single issue party. And again, I have no issue with this, but I really do think that considering that some of the other parties, some of the larger parties are already taking initiative for marijuana and cannabis over the next couple of years. I think you could vote better. The Independence for Climate Action Now. Look, these guys seem actually really, really cool. And look, they're all different independent candidates who actually joined together to make sure people actually gave a shit about climate change. And I have nothing against that at all. In fact, there's like a guy on there who was like really against offshore detention and the dude's a priest. Like it's, it, it doesn't seem that bad. I, uh, I had a bunch of jokes about this and then I watched Democracy Sausage and they kind of used most of, most of those. So very good on the Chaser Boys for doing that. And I'm very sorry I didn't watch that episode earlier. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I got no problem with them to be honest. The Jackie Lambie Network. Now look, I'm a little bit biased because Jackie Lambie follows me on Twitter, but not anymore because she's a ridiculous politician and she's very anti-immigration. And also she's a bit of a fucking idiot. I'm real sorry, Jackie. You can, j you just, Look, from the look of this, maybe pick up a trade. I don't know. I really don't know what you would want to do back into politics. I get that it's something you've done, what you think is successful for the last couple of years, but I'm very sorry. It just hasn't been effective. Cat is Australia party. Look, look, as far as I'm concerned, don't vote for them. Just don't. Yeah, he's got a big hat and he talks funny. So what? You're not gonna vote for Molly Meldrum. Fuck off. The DLP. Just imagine if the Pope was your uncle, and then you gave him power in parliament. Yeah, not a, not a real cool idea now, is it? Yeah, not, not great. We're only now halfway through this list. The Liberal Democrats. Look, I hate Senator Lionhelm a whole lot. He's the kind of guy that like talks about freedom of speech all the time, but can't even take a joke, let alone possibly an egg in two or three days. Also, he talks about free speech, but it feels like it's mainly for white people, especially with the kinds of people in his party. Look, the only thing that I would say that if you care about certain policies that the Liberal Democrats have talked about often is the legalization of drugs, which again, there are other better parties who aren't complete dumbasses and dipshits to do that. Love Australia or leave Australia. Is that right? Jesus fucking Christ. Wow, they really just have named it. That's their logo? Fucking hell, that's, they're committed. I'll give them that. Jesus fucking Christ, that is, that is, this is not a good election. This is a very not good election. The not good, very bad, terrible election. That's what they should call this. Look, they are another Islamophobic party. And uh, also they want us to get out of the UN. So I, I don't know why. There's a few other parties that have like talked about this a lot as well. And I also don't know what they think the UN does. I, I would very, I would, if somebody could question them, like, you know, during like an interview, I would absolutely adore that. That would be very, very cute. One Nation, wow, look, look at, look at, ah, oh, so many jokes I'm gonna make about this. They're real terrible grifters. We, 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 we get that now, right? They're just grifters. They're not a political party. They're a weird way to launder a bunch of money through to Pauline. She's been a senator for a long time now, except for the time where she was in jail and, and obviously, you know, a bit before that and, uh, we, we can stop this. We really can stop this. 
If we stop giving them airtime, if we stop talking about them, I'm actually making the problem now by including them in this video as a minor party. We need to, to stop this. Also, please watch that Al Jazeera documentary because it is absolutely fascinating to see how these people think about their own country. Despite the fact that they talk about Australian values and liberties, they're very happy to give it away to another country. Real cool, real, real cool guys. The Pirate Party. These guys seem to be very a lot to the left. They're one of the very few parties to actually talk about civil liberties and digital rights and are things that we should really, really care about as Australia moves into a stronger digital economy. They've got a lot of evidence-based policies and honestly, if you voted for them, I probably wouldn't care, but I do think that they have some cool stuff that you should actually give a shit about, especially coming into the next election or two. The Republican Party of Australia. Look, I don't, I don't entirely know what these guys are for, mainly because they haven't updated their website in half a decade. Yeah, this is their real website. I, I had, because I had to check all of these different parties and their websites, they stopped updating it in 2014. And the only positive that I could see that they had was like, back in 2014, they were, uh, they were hoping to have like a cannabis crop of like, it would be worth a trillion dollars. That's very good. But uh, also they have a Homeland Security policy, which feels very bad. Like it, it didn't work in America. So why should we do it? We also haven't had a major terrorist attack that killed 3,000 people, even though we do a lot of deals with Saudi Arabia. So maybe don't vote for them. Rise up Australia. More like rise up gamers, am I right? Now these guys are actually like very anti-immigration and uh, yeah, they, they, they talk a lot about, they talk a lot of, a lot of real racist shit. So um, not, not too great, not, not, not real good. They also have a song that is as bad as their party, which I've linked in the description, so you can look at that. They're actually one of the few parties that come with a theme song, and it's we're just gonna listen to it for a little bit now. Rise up, Australia. Ah, yes. Very Australian. Very, definitely doesn't sound like an American. The Science Party, they seem very cool. They actually have a lot of evidence-based policies, obviously very pro-science. Made of mine ran uh, in the election a couple years ago came third uh, for the year, set his hair on fire with a Bunsen burner. So, you know, not that, that part's not true. But I, I look, I, I, I have no problem with these guys. The candidates actually seem very normal. So if you voted for them, I, I, I don't really, I'm, I'm not really against it. The Secular Party of Australia. Now, these guys, are, they're very pro-science, which is very good, and they're, they're anti-religion. That's obviously the secular part. Uh, but they're also extremely anti-immigration. Uh, so apparently they just want all of the, they want no religion but also only whites. So, so good luck with that, considering a lot of the people who've made a lot of scientific discoveries in the past 40 to 100 to 1,000 years haven't been white, so good, good luck with that. Arrgh. The Seniors United Party of Australia! I am so sorry if I gave you a heart attack. Jesus fucking Christ, I'm so sorry. Look, basically, Toot toot! All aboard the boomer train! It's discounted tickets, so don't worry about it. They're very anti-franking credits, like them being taken away. And uh, obviously they don't give a fuck about the young people, because they're gonna die soon, so fuck you. That, that being said, they do uh, they do want more money into aged care, which I'm not against. I, I do think that obviously any sort of aged care or disability sort of fund uh, should be improved in Australia, especially pensions. Um, but again, oh god, the, the name and the whole franking credits thing, you didn't have to put that in there. Jesus Christ. The Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party. Look, if you're not a shooter or a fisher or a farmer, fuck off. Now, now obviously I, didn't, I don't believe that. I'm a little bit biased because my dad owns a gun. The Socialist Equality Party. Now look, they want to free Chelsea Manning and they want to free Julian Assange, which I feel a little bit mixed about to be honest because of his other crimes. They like socialism, and look, if their beliefs are anything to go by, I'm sure they will share around the few thousand of votes that they get in the Senate. The Sustainable Australia Party. Sustainable for white Australia. Ah. No, they seem very, very shitty uh, in general. They want to make sure that, you know, that, uh, that it's more sustainable, you know, to, to, to live in Australia for whites. The Great Australian Party. Okay, um, this is so weird. Okay, so this one's going to take a little bit longer. We're near the end of the video anyway, so fuck it. Rod Cullerton, who was a One Nation senator, he got kicked out of the party and so he formed his own party. But however, when he was setting up the party, he declared that he wasn't bankrupt, but he actually is bankrupt. And so when he tried to put through the registration for the party to the Australian Electoral Commission or the AEC, they were like, hey, you lied on these forms. So we're gonna have to give this matter to the Australian Federal Police. And then they still went ahead and then got a bunch of senators. 
And they're also not been the best senators. In fact, like, they're all real drunk and rowdy in WA, and they caused such a disturbance that the party head had to be like, eh, hey, like, uh, this isn't gonna happen again, don't worry about it. Like, it's, I, I, I just, I don't, like, I also had, like, an interaction with one of their, like, one of their fans, and this is actually how I learnt about them, and, uh, he tried to debate me because he knew the constitution and then owned it. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. This party's very bad. You have a very bad party and you should feel bad. The small business party. If you don't have a small business, ah, fuck you. Also, they want to like cut a lot of red tape and they're also want to bring down immigration a lot more than it already is. It's just, it's just not good. It's real bad. Why did you hide this on your website? Like below all the other things. You thought it was good because you were focused on small businesses? Despite the fact that a lot of small businesses are actually owned by first generation immigrants. Did you, did you think, did you think about this? Did you think about this before you did this? I feel like you didn't think about this before you did this. The Together Party. Do you remember Mark Swivel? I, I, I think it was before my time, but he has a party now and he wants to like protect the ABC and SBS and Mark's a lawyer and he seems pretty cool. I, I just, I feel like this is okay. This is kind of an okay party. If you voted for it, I probably wouldn't care too much about it. Eh. The United Australia Party. Oh boy. Look, the definition of insanity would be voting for these fucking idiots at all. They're essentially, look, and, and a few people have already gone into this, like The Chaser and The Weekly and Friendly Geordies and a whole bunch of other people. They're not good. They're very bad. Also, if you're voting for Clive because you think he's a good businessman, he's not. In fact, he doesn't pay a lot of his workers, and so I think that if you put him in charge, he probably wouldn't be willing to help the actual workers of Australia. A lot of his candidates are also not very good either. Some of them have been a part of other parties, or simply have not had a good political record. It's very, very weird to see him constantly run, and seeing his billboards everywhere, and seeing them defamed in humorous ways. Eh, kinda nice. I, I like that. I, I think that those are the things that people should care about. But again, if you vote for him, not really helping Australia out at all. In so many ways. So, so many ways. Like his whole anti-China thing, despite the fact that he constantly does deals with China, and also his, the stuff that he made for his campaign was from China as well, I just, I just don't get it. Like people have compared him, he's like, oh, the Australian Donald Trump, but yeah, Trump's bad, and so is he. And not just like a oh, orange man bad thing, but he doesn't care about Australia. He cares about his self-interests and hearing his name over and over again to the point where he just kind of makes it about himself, and that's... that's not great. I don't... I don't want that for this country. And I don't think you would either, if you're voting for the things you think he cares about. So which is it, Clive? Do you care about money more? Or Australia? Which one is it? Which one is it, Clive? Tell us which one it is! Which one is it, Clive? Vote Flux. These guys seem to be okay, but it's one of those direct democracy things again. You can obviously put these people into power, but then you vote for their stuff and the policies they care about online. I, uh, look, I don't mind these guys to be honest. You know, the worst thing about them, honestly, is that their logo looks like it's from a 2013 bank ad. That's basically it. That's my biggest problem with vote flux, other than the whole voting online for democracy kind of thing. The Western Australia Party. So it looks like they're based in South Australia. The fuck, no, that's wrong. That's wrong, that's wrong. Jesus Christ. The Women's Party. I'm not gonna make any jokes here. Uh, look, I, I think that they're, they're very, they wanna close the gender pay gap. I think that that's a good thing. So, so I mean, good for them. I mean, again, I'm really not gonna make any jokes here. The yellow vest party. Ah, uh, thank God that they're wearing those because we can see how Islamophobic and racist they are. And that's it. That is all of them. I, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them. There's over 40. And these are the ones that I could actually find information about and then also write, jokes that hadn't been on other political shows for the week. Yeah, it's obviously we're uh, we're less than a week and a half away for this election. Uh, I don't feel comfortable about it at all. Even writing this, because I try not to do political stuff, was a real pain. It's, uh, it wasn't fun. A lot of these jokes are very bad. In fact, a lot of them would not consider them jokes at all. And that's very fair. That's extremely fair. Uh, I have put uh, a lot of the resources that I used. There was actually a um, this little image that was that was going around about the Victorian election. Uh, I obviously have used some of the words and some of the jokes there, and so I do apologize for that. But again, I wanted to credit. I, I don't know who actually made this. If you could tell me in the comments, I'd be so very happy to give them credit. Uh, again, because I stole a lot of the jokes from it. But um, also, I did a lot of independent research. I'm not going to link to the actual websites and the policies. Very, very happy for you to do your own research for that, and I encourage that so, so much. 
mainly because this election is going to be about policy, it's going to be about the things that you care about and the people that you care about. Really what more elections should be about, it's more about policy and less about people, which is... We've had a lot of people politics over the last six years and it's been very, very exhausting. And I would just hope and I would appeal to your empathy and your humanity and why you care about this country and not necessarily in a nationalistic way, but more in a way that you want to benefit the people that come here, the people that live here and the people that care about this country and do their very, very hardest to make it a great place every single day. Um, and I just hope you vote more than anything else. I don't care if you're left wing or right wing or even crazy right wing. I just care that you vote. I'm Harrison Engstrom. Please vote on May 18th or vote early. How was that? Is that good? Yeah, no, no. I'll take, uh, I'll take the money in, uh, in Chinese stocks if that's okay. No, no, no. Oh, fuck, this is on.